Greetings, growers of the world. Jordan River here with more Growcast. Honored to serve you in your garden today. We have a breeder feature. I know you guys love breeder features. Well, this is a good one. It's actually a return feature. We have Kyle Breeder from Predicative Breeding, now Pure Breeding. We talk about the rebrand. This has been, there's been a couple of rebrands recently. That's pretty interesting. Uh, we talk about the rebrand. We talk about selfing. We talk about sprays and stabilization and all sorts of fun stuff. You're really, really going to enjoy the episode. This has been requested, and uh, I think you will I think you will really uh, appreciate what Kyle has to share today. Before we jump in with Kyle, Rimrock Analytical, rimrockanalytical.com, code GROWCAST for free shipping on your sex tests. If you're not growing feminized, you're growing regular, you got to watch out for those males. Unless you're breeding, you don't want those males. Stop wasting time cultivating those males, sexing them out, up potting them trying to get your cuttings to root and waiting weeks for them to show sex. Uh, skip all that. Go ahead and hit rimrockanalytical.com. Get some tests shipped to your door for free with code GROWCAST and then take some samples when they're seedlings. Mail them off to Rimrock Analytical. They will tell you the males from the females lickety split. You kill those males in the seedling stage. Rimrockanalytical.com. Our choice sex testing partners here at GROWCAST. They also have soil testing, plant nutrition testing, pathogen testing, and so much more. Go and check it out, everybody. Always use code GROWCAST. It helps us out here. And be sure to send us a screenshot of any of your codes, however you can get them to us, and you are entered to win free seeds each and every month. All right, everybody. Let's uh, get into it with Kyle Breeder. Thank you for listening, and enjoy the program. Hello, podcast listeners. You are now listening to GrowCast. I'm your host, Jordan River, and I want to thank you for tuning in today. Before we get started, I urge you to share the show. As always, tell a grower a friend about GrowCast and make sure you're subscribed. Get on our green list for free, growcastpodcast.com forward slash list for updates, giveaways, tips, and so much more. And then, of course, check out patreon.com forward slash growcast for hundreds of hours of bonus member content. Today, we are back doing a breeder feature, a return breeder feature, mixed in with some uh, breeding advice and selection advice and more. From Predicative Breeding, we have Kyle. What's up, Kyle? Hey, man. What's up? I'm really glad to be here. Uh, you know, this is the second time around, and I enjoy it every time, man. You know, it's funny because I often refer to people by their brand name. Um, a lot of people like to stay, you know, private or whatever. Uh, so, for instance, Queen of the Sun has a name, but I, I end up calling her Queen of the Sun. I've called you predicative for quite some time, so I do find Kyle to be a bit easier. Yeah, well, you know, that's funny. Uh, so, because so I love the name, right? And I don't want to get too, uh, too far off topic here, but uh, it's just becoming uh, uh, slightly problematic in regards to communication or uh, just kind of getting the name out there in general. Uh, there's a lot more to it than just that, but basically, so I'm actually altering uh, my business name in the next couple of weeks. I have oh. new packaging coming and some new, uh, yeah. So it's going to make it a lot easier. It's a lot more simpler. It's a lot more, uh, you know, short, sweet, defined. And I'm actually really excited about it. Cause it's just, uh, it's just a need to happen. <laughs> now that's so. actually a good uh, starting point. Can I give you a piece of advice? If you t maybe take it, if you like it, leave it. If you don't. Sure. Predicative breeding also works very well for a slogan. Yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, it's being able to uh, basically, I mean, it's not really the correct word term, but uh, predict right. through what you already kind of know what the traits are of the plants and what's what you're, you're basically what the outcome is going to be from that in a nutshell. It could be like uh, a slogan. Interesting, though. Nothing wrong with a fresh rebrand, man. We're excited to see the new the new logo and the new name. Yeah, I feel like it's, I feel like the time is now before it gets too late. You know what I mean? So. It's just uh, I'm excited about it, and you'll see it in the next couple of weeks. So I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Nice. I don't want to sit now in case somebody tries to snatch it up. But. <laughs> right? We'll get you on Growcast TV after that to uh, do yeah, an announcement or something fun like that. But anyways, man, I do want to say thank you for your first episode. It was a big hit. People loved it. I'm sure that you have you re-upped. Have you restocked? I'm sure you had trouble keeping up with the Growcast seed piranhas. Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of love from uh, your people, man. Uh, that makes me. Uh, I just love getting love from anybody, man. Cause it's like, you know, there's, there's a lot of times where I just keep like giving and giving. And sometimes it feels like I'm almost just running in circles for no reason. But then I get a lot of, you know, really good messages from people like, you know, that listen to your show or like things that listen to, uh, or just anything content that I'm putting out. Um, so, um, nice. uh, but yeah, they've been, uh, they've been getting after it. So, I mean, right now I'm like dwindling really low on a lot of stock. I mean, I have uh, Afghan cherries up there. I have some, uh, Boston cream donut, 
some brown sugar cake, uh, cherry pop tarts, and a couple other ones that are still on there. But I'm running like extremely low. Like I'm down to maybe like within 50 seeds or something of each, or maybe even less. So I'd say in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have like nothing. But I currently just harvested uh, seven of my new varieties that are completely filled with uh, John from Green Bodie's pollen. And so I'd say maybe two or three weeks from today, uh, once they're all dried and uh, separated, I'll, I'll have a brand new launch coming out. So it should kind of somewhat work out. But if anybody's looking for some of the, that gear, because once it's gone, I, I'm, I'm not remaking it. So if anybody's a collector or, you know, they want some good stuff, I mean, it's once it's there now, so, but it won't be in the next, you know, three weeks. Uh, what did you grab from the Green Bodie line? You get like some of the Tenzin Kush mail or what, what mail did you get? Yeah, he sent me like a, a pretty massive uh, ball of uh, hazy kush. Ooh. Fem pollen. Feminized pollen. Oh, feminized pollen. Oh, that's no, oh, of course. I'm sorry. I forgot who I was speaking to for a moment. Yeah, yeah. I don't play with the. Rest I apologize. Of I, yeah, I, that yeah. just slipped my mind. I was in regular breeder feature mode. Uh, for the for the first time, listeners, if you haven't heard um, Predicatives <laughs> last uh, episode, go check it out. Specializing in the feminized seed stock. But the thing is, during that last episode, I don't remember a lot of the names that you just mentioned. You were focusing a lot on the rock candies last time. Yeah. So yeah, like yeah. the dirty pop tarts and the Afghan one you said, the cherry Afghan. I I'd like to. I know there's not much of it left, but I'd like to talk on those if you're down. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So yeah, so the last time we talked, I was dwindling really low then, and then um, you know I, I didn't want to just run out completely so that the whole you know basically the community doesn't get anything. So I kind of went back to my seed stock, and I was like, oh wow, oh yeah, I remember this cross. This was this was amazing, and I was like, oh yeah, I remember this too, and I was like finding all this good material that I didn't even know I had like deep in the treasure chest basically, and I, <laughs> so I, I you know I basically cleaned it up, took out you know what seeds I thought were really viable because everything I do is hand selected. So every single seed that anybody's ever gone for me has literally been in my two fingers and then put inside the vial. But um, yeah, so then I was just looking through and I had some extra stuff and the you know I had some basically a couple some Afghan an Afghani line that I was kind of playing with that came from the cherry line and uh, the a wedding cake that I took a, a little bit further from the I had a breeder's cake that was on there but I actually had crossed it to another pheno that was basically extremely pungent and wicked good yielding these like massive just, man they're like almost like half soda can size colas everywhere Ooh. and uh i remember that that was in there and this is just, i just had some stuff in there that then i relaunched it and wow and that did actually really really good uh, a lot of people i mean i think within i was like sold out within like 48 hours or something almost but, yeah but yeah i guess in regards to talking specifically about those those varieties i mean that cherry pop tarts is a is basically a a, a back cross to a different variety. What is pop tarts? I'm not familiar with that strain. Yeah, so it's it's Afghan cherries, right? So I had oh. an Afghani line that I was playing with, and then um, basically I had two daughters. So it's so hard to explain because there's like so much to say, but so and, but trying to shrink it. <laughs> so I always take all uh, like during that, that time where I was making the, those original crosses with the Afghani and the breeders cake. I didn't have just that one pheno. I always, I found like twins of some. Uh, so I'd like cross. So I like cross the two together because I'd always uh, the way I do things is uh, I have like you know like eight two by four tents, and in those I I put each variety and I have a different variety in each one of those tents. And sometimes they're, they're they have twins with them, and I leave them in there with them so I could basically do an F1 cross or an F2 cross if I want to bring things further. Or if I'm just doing a, a self cross, I'll have maybe a copy of you know the one I'm spraying plus a copy of herself in there. I know it's, I'm, it might seem like I'm kind of no, no, I'm getting that. that. So what you're saying is when you say twins, you mean if you see two pheno phenotypes that are very similar, uh, almost like you, you, you know, you, you're getting two different seeds from the pack, but they're so similar that you pair them, as you say, to try to like solidify those traits. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's say you get a, let's say you get a ten pack of uh, S ones or F ones. You know, basically, when you pop all those tens, what you want to do, uh, what you can do, you have two options. You either find one. Let's say they all suck except one. Well, that one was beautiful. So what I would do is just spray that one branch with, a, you know, depending on which chemical you're, that you want to use, and we can get into that a little bit later. And basically, just that one branch is uh, its own entity. So you can just spray the one branch, and the rest of the plant will still grow flower. Just that one branch that you sprayed will start growing male parts. Well, once those male parts come, you just wipe it back onto the rest of the plant. Well, now you have an S1 of that plant. And, you know, so now you have tons of copies, obviously, and you can plant those and go deeper. And the whole goal is to find two that look the same, you know, or something close. So you can kind of 
work it further down the line. And what you're trying to do is once you keep pairing similar copies together and together and together, you're narrowing down the uh, the different expressions. You know, so you're not getting uh, a tall, short, uh, you know, a big bushy one all in the same seed line. Uh, you're kind of making it more uniform is the word I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, the only problem sense. with that is the fur- the further you get into the F generations, though, um, your things tend to slow down a little bit. You know, the vigor that comes with doing like an F1 cross, uh, it's not as fast, but you can't get everything in one basket. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> right, right. No, I know um, what you mean. But I mean, the key is to have two pure lines and then cross those together. So let's say you have like a, Two Afghani lines, one on the left, one on the right. Like, let's say one is more like blueberry dominant, or let's just say it's, you know, let's just say the terpene provides blueberry and it has huge colas. Let's say the one on the right is tall with huge colas. And basically, if you, if those have been bred, both sides are like a, the F8 generation and you cross them together, whatever that cross comes out to, all those F1Cs are going to be pretty damn consistent because you've narrowed down the left, you've narrowed down the right. So you only have, when you cross those two together, you're only getting, you're getting a final copy, and that copy will be dictated on the homozygous and heterozygous traits, you know, um, which you know the dominant traits, shall I say? If that makes uh, any, that makes some kind of sense. It does. It makes a ton of sense, and it explains a lot to me because, and man, that's why I think a lot of, a lot of the marketing terms and the way people look at this can be very misleading, oh right? Gosh. Because you know what I'm saying? Because it's like. Okay, so how do I tra- articulate this? Is exactly what you said. And I have such limited experience with seeds, and I've still observed this. I've seen F1 packs that are extremely uniform, and I've seen F1 packs with a wild amount of variety. And it's probably because, like you said, how much breeding was going into, uh, the, the parents, into, that, into the parents uh, and how right. stable that progeny was, right? 1,000%, right. So, like, let's say, you, right, if, if you have two plants that don't have much variation and you cross them, all those children are going to be pretty damn identical down the line. But now, let's say you have, let's say you did, like, a tangy to a cush and a cush to a blue dream, and then, and then you know, and then you pop those seeds, and they're all, like, you know, you just kept going from one to the other, one to the other, and then you pop those seeds, you're just going to have, like, radical expressions of all those, of all that, uh, basically what we call the genome, which is the the background parenting. Uh, parents of of that of that seed, you know, it's just gonna be all over the place, you know. And then, uh, especially when you start getting into like the F three generations, then it goes batshit crazy, which is a really good selection process if you want to be, you know, if you have something really special that you're in love with, you know, F one there's variation, but they're they're somewhat the same. F two uh, is an interesting because there's still some change in F two, but F three is like you get like it opens up, it just opens everything wide open. I, I can't find the words right now. I'm trying to think of, but. We're both really stoned, which is great. That's why this is Growcast. But I, I, yeah. I have heard that. Is it, is it fair to say, this is something I've heard. You can say, you can agree with this or not. Is, you said the F2s, I've often ho- heard those reach back to the grandparents maybe a little bit more. Do you find that to be the case or no? Uh, I would say the F3 generation is where you get to see almost everything. And then you from there is where you're going to want to navigate like, okay, this one's tall and bushy. This one's like short and stout. This one's like wow. kind of medium, medium height, but like, uh, you know, maybe the the internode structure is, is different. You know, it's just basically you have like a, tons of variety in that F3 generation to where you can actually take it and you're like, you know, what? I want to go this direction with it because you're seeing it now. The stabilization on F4. I like that. Yeah, F four will narrow down the three a little bit, and then you know five, six, and then they say when you get to like F eight, you're like almost everything's identical, like to the T. I mean, I've never brought anything that far, and only because, I mean, I have like personal projects that I'm kind of working with, but you know, the hard part, Jordan, is, and I don't know about everybody because it's not everybody for sure, but you know, for us as breeders, you know, we want to give the community. Uh, variety. Well, if we were trying to really push stuff into like F7 and F8, uh, I mean, you wouldn't see work from us for four or five years. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the problem. Cause you know, you figure you got to grow the mother, whatever, you know, that's two or three months Then you got to take cuts, you know, and then you got to you know, clone and you got to grow them out and then you got to get the pollen and then you got to get the seeds harvest. Well, that's by that whole, that entire process from seed to seed, you know, to a, vari- a batch of seeds is like six, seven, eight months. Well, now I'm in the F1 generation, so now I do that eight months again. Now you're in the F2, eight months. F, you know, so it's just uh, it's just hard to to do that and still help the community. So yeah, you know, it's it's tough too because you're you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because first of all, whatever you were working on probably isn't like hot or relevant anymore. If you did all that work, oh, and then right. you, and then you go to charge a fair amount of money for all that work you did, and people complain about your high prices. 
And right. that, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I don't mean to be cynical here, but like, you're, you're very correct in pointing out that process is, and let's be honest, man, if I can kind of peel back the curtain a little bit, I know breeders who I like and respect who have had testers report herms and they still release that strain anyways. And again, it's like, maybe it was like, oh, that was just one report, but you know what I mean? Like, it's not just this hard and fast thing where I don't know if we're ever going to breed that intersex trait out of cannabis. Right. And then, and then when you include epigenetics, like what, how you're cultivating it, let's go back to the F8 example. What if that plant was cultivated very poorly though? And and you know what I mean? Isn't that kind of why fems have a bad name because they were stressed out and they started creating this, this hermaphrodite, this intersex progeny. And then they were more susceptible to that because of that breeding process. Right. Isn't that kind of how epigenetics work? Uh, I would say epigenetics do play a a role in plant varieties for sure. I mean, th- th- what I think and, you know, and I've actually heard, I'm not going to say names, but like well-known people, I, they like make it a post about it, which I thought was embarrassing on their end, but was like, <laughs> you know, they're like, Hey, you know, if you're finding herms, it's not me, it's you just saying, you know, and it's like, well, uh, not really, dude. Yeah, that's crazy. I, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. So th- at the end of the day, the plant was created to survive, right? So that that herm or AKA inter, inter, I, like to, I like to try and push the word intersex because it's uh, the more technical or right. right. Anyways, but uh, that whole process is her. So when she's when there's like a forest fire or there's a bug or a deer or or like an infestation that she will be like, oh shit, like I can't let my race go to you know basically become uh, obsolete. So yeah. she so she turns and blasts the next one and hope that to continue you know basically continue life. So that trait is there. So I don't I agree with you. I don't think you're going to breed it out unless we start getting into like genetically modified stuff. But right. the whole goal of breeding and for anybody that actually wants to breed and wants to have a successful company and whether it be regs or females, because I had a huge fight about somebody like, well, it's that's just fans. It's like, no, nah, because female regs can do that too, man. It's just, it's part of the plant's uh, alleles, you know, but uh, is to find a girl who doesn't, who it just takes a lot more, you know? And that's why in the, in the beginning, anybody who's heard the first stuff that we did, it's like, you got to push them, you know? And like, for me, I've, I spent basically a year and a half to two years not making any money or doing anything with anything except just effing the plants up. And from there, I lost like 90% of the seed stock because they all hermed. Well, the 10% that were rugged, I've been breeding with them since. And I can be 100% honest with you that I have not even looked in the corner of an internode for a, a, a gender site in like two years now or a year and a half oh, since, wow. I, since I started. I, I don't even look toward it. Never had, a, never had a problem once because of that process I use. And then till this day, I, I just keep crossing stuff and I don't have any issues because, I, because of, I took the time to do that. You know, and no one else is, no one has that time. You know, they just see fire, you know, oh shit, this is fire. And then they, well, you gotta, you know, either self it or cross it and release it to the market. And then there's herms everywhere. And then like, and then, yeah, I don't know. It's just, that's like what everyone's doing. It's like the, the thing to do apparently. So the stress testing, your stress testing protocol, what does that look like? So, uh, flowering and solo cups. So I would do that. <laughs> that's a good start. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, I'll, I'll clone, I'll take a cutting, I'll put in a solo cup, I'll let her grow maybe, you know, three or four weeks. So she's probably, you know, three feet tall, probably. So it's pretty tall and then I'll flower out. So, I mean, you're like watering, like, two or three times a day, but she's like, she's like struggling with no, you know, being root bound and like, and just like the, the constant drying out. And that's one way for sure. If she survives that, she's, she's a Mm -hmm. beast, you know, and then you have your, basically I'll let them, I'll let them, I'll give them drought. So they, they basically dwindle down and start, you know, and you've seen it happen before, probably where they just start tipping over because they're dying of thirst. And then I'll revive her with some water you know, over water or over nutrients. So like, you know, nutrient burn for sure. Like maybe go like a quarter above what the actual dosage is. You know, if it's a, a mm-hmm. tablespoon per gallon, maybe go a, a table and a quarter or a half to burn her on purpose or, to, you know, uh, you know, create a lockout maybe. Uh, and again, it all sounds stupid. And it's like, well, why would I waste my time and money? Well, if you plan on breeding and that's what you want to do and you don't want to, because your company will go completely belly up because it doesn't take long for like, it happens everywhere. Like, Oh, you know, get seeds through Jordan. Oh dude, no, he's, I've, I got mad herms last time, <laughs> you know? And, and then it's like, you just get shut down immediately. So it's just, you know, and it, it's happened to me too, but a, a lot of, the, I mean, I've had like, you know, I've, I've, I've given over 30,000 seeds and I've maybe had four or five people come back and say, Hey, I had a problem, but they had like, I'm like, well, what happened? Like, Oh, I had thrips. It's like, well, okay. Well, the plant was basically dying like immensely so it's still gonna like i was telling you before it's not bulletproof 
Right. She's still going to want to do it, but the whole goal is just find a, a really strong woman and then begin the process. Well, it, it is interesting. It's also interesting how you said pests because I, I'm, I'm aware that a variety of stressors can cause herms, but that light leak is really the one that everybody kind of goes to first, right? Kind of the surefire way yeah. to get that going. But in my experience, I've had... So a couple of runs ago, I, le- I left my tent open mid-flower. I had a tarp over my tent because I was like worried about pinholes. But then the tarp, obs- the tart, <laughs> the tarp obscured <laughs> my view of the actual flap, which I left open for a number of days. It may have even been like seven days, man. So my kahuna glue uh, hermed because, you know, I left my tent open. But the turp drip, the, the cultivar right next to it didn't. Right. So... It's just weird, right? Yeah, so that's the thing. So I've heard, and I haven't like, I definitely haven't had the time to like study particularly this exact subject to the T, but like I heard that even just the spot that the light was hitting only hermed. Because you got you to remember, each branch is its own identity, right? which is, I find that interesting to say. And it's the same thing, and, and it's true with all plants because you can literally take an orange tree as like tangerines and there's like, you know, uh, sister plants of an orange and it's not uncommon for people to cut branches off of different trees and then graft them onto one tree. And the coolest thing about that, man, is each branch will still uh, bear fruit at its original time from the original tree it came from, which is the craziest shit in the world, dude. That that, that, that branch has its own mind, its own memory. It's got everything. That's Um, crazy. I didn't know that, man. I've heard of those multi-citrus trees, but... That's why yeah. I hadn't heard of that specific point. Yeah, they know they they somehow know when to still do their thing from Whoa. the original where it came from. Yeah, so so I was just curious to see if maybe if it was like the whole plant that, that hermed on you, or if it was just the spot where the light was in. Oh well, good point. And and if a pollen sac bursts, then it's kind of game on at that point. But you're you're so right. I've even seen people post that they have an outdoor plant, and light pollution will get to them. But for instance, they'll have an outdoor photo period, and, and they're going full term or whatever. But then their neighbor's floodlight hits the side of their plant and like one side or a quarter of it will start to re-veg from the light pollution. Right. But the other side will flower out. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that like half re-veg thing. It's exactly what you're saying. That is a very interesting yeah. point, man. Hey, that actually brings me back to something I want to focus on. You said it earlier. You on your first episode, you brought up how you like to use silver thiosulfate. Is that the correct? There you go. There you go, right? I pulled that out of my brain just like that. My slurricane saturated brain. I thought you wrote it down somewhere. <laughs> no, no. I was just making sure that I said it correctly. Silver thiosulfate. I've recommended it to several people since you came on my show is, is why I was able to dig that up. And yeah. you mentioned how you can apply that to one lower branch and get some seeds. Right. Do you feel that's a, do you feel that's like a wildly more efficient way to save genetics than to say take a cut right before harvest and try to re-veg it as people do are you asking like is there more more efficient way to to like what's well here's the question here's a better way to phrase the question i grow a great plant and it's a keeper and i didn't take any cuts and it's late in flower and so and now i need to save it a lot of people would take a cutting and then work really hard to re-veg that bitch which can be very very challenging yeah. Would you say it's a good idea to just hit one of the lowers with some silver thiosulfate, or is that going to create the pollen sac to burst and affect the whole plant? Or like, t- talk to me if, about if that's a viable way to save genetics. Yeah, so I've actually been through that, and I took an L on that. So I had a <laughs> plant that was like a, it was like pure, man, it was like literal mango, and I've never had, you know, I've all, I've had small fruit and. Citrate. I've smelled all these things, but I had like a, it was like true like peach mango. And oh, it was like, I, I love was, mango. Yeah, I was like so excited because I've never, it was so like tropical and rare, man. It was like a light mango, like a, like a fresh, mm. uh, it wasn't like a, a pungent or gas, it was just like pure mango. And I wanted to, and I was like, oh my Lord, I got to keep this thing. And I was in like week six or seven and it was only like an eight, nine week. And I was like, man, I was like, basically I took a cutting, I took multiple cuttings and I trimmed it all up. So it wasn't focusing on, you know, a bunch of this stuff. And just, I gave it just a little bit of vegetative so it could kind of ease itself back into it. And it was like beyond the point of saving, I guess. And, and, and with a cut, it wouldn't work. So I lost that variety like permanently. So I was like, well, fuck. So what I would do now, if I going back and I guess to kind of answer your question is re the whole plant, you know, if you're going to do that. So I would, 
but you could easily take a week four, or week five flower, and you know, in week six. And I'm sure people are going to say, like, like, well, I've done week seven before. I'm, I'm sure you have, but just it's way harder. Not all varieties, not varieties are the same, right? And so it's just you're better off keeping the plant as it is because it has a root structure. It already has everything, and just going right back to veg, which is what uh, what I do. So I mean, the second for me, once I pollinate a female plant or one that I want to get pollinated. The second I, I wait two or three or four days, and once I start basically seeing red hairs, I know that they're pre- she's pregnant. And uh, basically, I, I immediately switch the timer back to uh, 18.6. And what that does is not only will it give me a shit ton of clones in about two months or a month, you know, four weeks, five weeks, but it also allows the seeds to go beyond normal maturity you know so much so that the calyxes start browning because the plants is getting old and dying that they're so mature and you can't fuck that up you know because what you could do is sometimes if you're trying to play with the whole all you know timing and then like oh you hit it in week three when there's just white fresh pistols and then you know but sometimes that timing doesn't always work out and you hit it in week five well now the plant only has a four three four weeks left to till it basically dies well sometimes those seeds need five weeks well now you're gonna have premature seeds that you can't even so that answers my question by the time you can tell and this this is coming from someone who's not a breeder so that's why by the time you can tell if it's fire it's so late that you can't self that thing it wouldn't have enough time to to mature the seeds yeah no could i make well i guess i'm defeating my own argument i was going to say what about just spraying the the spray and self-pollinating one branch on each plant every time just so you have some seed stock in case it's good but I guess you're worried about those pollen sacs bursting and affecting the whole tent. So you have to really be on guard, right? So I, I guess yeah. I guess it makes sense. That's why people don't do that. Yeah, you'd want you'd want uh you definitely want a separate tent if you're gonna do that for sure. But yeah, I mean I for me, even if the plant is like kind of shitty, and well, that's not true because I don't really save those, but like it is a good thing that, you know, whatever varieties that anyone's having is to just do like a little like, how do you not want to save everything? And, te- you know, and the biggest thing is like, you know, what we have now, like, you know, I'm 33, with, you know, 20 years from now, this, it ain't gonna be around, but I'll still have seed stock from 20 years ago, you know, and it's gonna be so valuable. So I, anything I ever get, I try and do a, an S1 at least just to, to collect that plant years and years and years down the road. But so what to comment on everything, so I, I want to redirect you onto something else. And Whoever's listening to this gets a, it's a specialty for them because not many people know about it. But um, so I have a couple of friends that have tried it and it's worked really well. And I'm trying it now for now on is uh, uh, there's a new product that's called Hybrid Tech. I think it's, it's either H-I-B-R-I Tech, you know, T-E-C-H or H-Y. I think it's H-Y-B-R-I-T-E-C-H. And basically somebody has created a new spray that it's a one and done type of spray, which is uh, extremely valuable because you're not spraying every three days. And then, you know, SCS is still a chemical at the end of the day. So you don't want to be the fact that you're introducing yourself constantly every three days, spraying the plant, spraying the plant. It's, it's not healthy in general. Oh, the Elite X Elite Hybrotech. Yes. Yes. So you like this stuff, huh? I've, I've had a bunch of people use it and they've all gotten pollen so far. But the, wow. again, so the whole the whole glory of it is that you just spritz the plant one, well, not whatever, you know, lace up the plant once. And that's it. You just wait until she does her thing. Wow. It's STS. STS, you got to spray every third day. Wow. Wow. One and done indeed. Right. You're spraying like 25, 35 times to get pollen when with this product is a one and done. So uh, that's what I'm using for the next round. Uh, everyone I know that's used it so far, uh, it's worked. So Nice, man. I love it. Elite X Elite. Yeah. Hybertech. Hybridization reversal spray. We'll be right back with Pure Breeding. But before that, the Foop. That's right, the Foop has released The Mist. The Mist is out on the market, baby. Is it? You better go check. Hit foopcana.com. Use code GROWCAST420 anytime you want on any product and try out the brand new Foop Mist. You know the certified organic nutrient line, the Foop, based off of fish waste, but now they have a foliar product that is absolutely kick ass. It is a game changer if I must say so. I only use two foliar products, and this is one of them. The Foop Mist is a broad-spectrum foliar agent that provides everything your plant needs, from microbiology to macro and micronutrients. It's very powerful stuff. You only want to use one spray when your plants are young. That's how powerful this stuff is. 
It's got a little bit of uh, peppermint oil in there, a little bit of secret ingredients. Helps with the IPM. The plants love it. And I am absolutely hooked on the Foop Mist. Go and check it out. If you've been thinking about trying the Foop, uh, but you're not sure about switching over to the nutrients, check out the Mist. It's a great way to uh, to sample the power of the Foop. And I'm telling you, like I said, I use two products for foliar. I don't really see a point in using any other ones. And uh, the Foop is one of them. The Foop Mist, that is. Go and check it out. Code GROWCAST420, foopcana.com. Find it, use it, love it. Tell me about it. Anytime you use a code, send us a screenshot, however you can, and you're entered to win free seeds. We do that once a month. Thank you, everybody, and thank you to our proud partners, the Foop. All right, let's get back to Kyle Breeder. While we're on the subject of uh, recommended products, and you were just talking about old seeds, you know, digging back into your old seed bank, you were talking off air about a very interesting product that I'd never heard of. You want to talk about this Rev Organic Growth Stimulator? Yeah, so I've been I have a bunch of old seeds, uh, especially ever since I brought it up online. I mean, and if anybody has any, feel free to shout out to me. <laughs> but uh, I love collecting old seeds, man. I think there's so much, uh, you know, because once was is will never be again. You know, if that makes any sense in itself, is like a lot of these varieties that are they're just gone. You know, they've been recultivated or they've been brought, you know, to generation to generation. So anything that's old is like so rare and valuable. It's like if you're not collecting them, it's, it's something. I think it's a little bit crazy to not be doing it. <laughs> That's what all hoarders say. I'm just joking. Yeah. Well, I mean, because like some of the cannabinoid profiles, you know, and I think I brought this up before and I, and I, I just I always feel the need to say it. But like, you know, through all the years, this, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s, people were breeding with no lab results. They were going off of feel or look or more trichomes or more smell. Or at one point, there was no smell because of the prohibition. And then they went, then, the, you know, now we're back into smells and terpenes. You know, that's why skunk is, is kind of gone for the most part. But anything before that, you know, so as we got to now, here we are in 2021. It's a proven fact that a lot of the cannabinoid profiles are missing and gone. Like they're just not, they're not as available. So, you know, and, but they're still back in the old shit. So that's why to me, it's extremely valuable to still have access to that old shit because now you have, you just have more access to everything. But um, yeah, so the Rev product. Um, so anybody who is germinating old seeds, I would suggest gibberellic acid works really well, but what you want to do is like an H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide and water wash. So you don't want to like, which, because then the reason why, well, why do you really need that, Kyle? Well, because I've actually tried germinating old seeds. And when I went to go open the paper towel, because that's my preferred use of method, is uh, basically just mold and green and black. And the second that that mold or any of that bacteria, basically from it being in like somebody's pocket or wherever the hell it was stored or just, you know, environmentally, that bacteria touches that white tip and it immediately kills it and it's, it just grows a little nub and that's it. So the H2O2 cleans off the seed shell, which is what you want to do. And then uh, a seed cracker helps a lot too. They sell those, uh, I think the woodshed on Instagram has them. I bought one. Uh, it just barely cracks it, which allows the uh, the seed to kind of have a, a boost because it's it's they're weak. You know, and like I was telling you, Jordan, earlier before we started this is, uh, a lot of problem with seeds not germinating is they're dormant. The, the amount of stored energy inside the seed are very low, so they need help. So they need, you know, and they make what like what this product that I'm holding is a uh, just stimulant. Uh, so basically, it's like it's steroids. You know, if somebody is weak and scraggly, and you give them steroids, you get jacked. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> I've taken steroids, my friend. I've been prescribed steroids before. They're great. Um, no, this is uh, this is awesome because it's um, it looks like they're not cannabis focused it looks like uh they're just an organic kind of lawn and garden uh facing one but you've spoken to these guys and they've heard that this is i mean listen seeds are seeds right you're trying to get these things to pop doesn't matter if they're old tomato seeds or old cannabis seeds right yeah at the end of the day right yeah so um certified organic uh, usda organic it looks like i mean it's organic is all over their website i'm looking on the label wow man really interesting i'm, I'm trying to dig into what this is exactly while we're on on the air here, there's definitely microbials in it. It says that as well as uh, humic and fulvic acid, natural occurring carbon. Oh, wow. Dude, this stuff is awesome. And I'm kind of shocked that I haven't heard of this. Yeah. I mean, I'm, well, I just got it in the mail today. Well, it's been in there for a while. I haven't checked my mail a little bit, but yeah, I'm going to try it probably either in the next couple of days. It's, uh, it's, and we'll see because I have some, uh, I had a coworker. I don't know if I told you this was the last time, but I had a coworker that was saying that his wife, um, and he's like, you know, mid fifties, his wife found a bag of seeds in an old 
jewelry box from when she was 16. So like 35, 45 years ago, she, and she found seeds. And I was like, well, what are you doing with them? <laughs> you know, I was like, uh, let's do a trade. I'll give you something new. And give me the old. So I, I did a trade and I have these 40 year old seeds. I love it, dude. Pretty excited to, uh, to try this product on them. Hopefully, uh, cause I've cracked these seeds and they're still white inside. So they just, I think they just need, that's how you can tell too, for anyone that's listening is, you know, crack that seed open. If it's still white and like, you know, it looks pretty lively. I mean, that seed is still good. It just needs help. You know, whether that be, uh, hormonal help or maybe just cracking the seed a little bit to allow it to kind of um you know do its thing without having to push the seed open you know i i never i only tried that once when one looks like it was kind of struggling to open it has not worked for me and i've seen there are products like that seed cracker which people swear by that's what uh yeah, yeah that's what i've been told by by team members on this show like uh, the great riser rich he's like if you're having trouble get one of those seed crackers you you stand by those as well yeah, so I had a 1968 like, seed that I popped using a seed cracker and jabrilic acid. Now, the problem with jabrilic <laughs> acid is you, you need to find the milligram per water ratio because there's different strengths, you know? So what I did was I took like four different strengths and then tried a, a, a seed in each one and one of them worked and I actually got one to crack and pop. So jabrilic acid does work as well. Nice, nice, the jabrilic acid. But back to this Rev really quick because people will ask, R-E-V, Rev Organic Growth Stimulant, organicrev.com. Uh, we're not partners or anything. I just found these guys. I think I might reach out to them though. This is really cool. And yeah, it looks like I was right. The only organic source of essential carbon, humates, and microbials all naturally occurring in one product. Pretty cool, man. I wonder if this can be used beyond the seedling stage. I mean, yeah, it looks, certainly looks like it from their website. Yeah, yeah. For home, garden, and landscape plants, use two to four capsules per gallon. Sure thing. I'm, so, I'm on it. This is great, man. Love the product recommendations. I mean, cannabis can be a landscape plant, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not, man? Can be a co- right. technically it can be a cover crop. You know what I mean? Right, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, the ingredients. The ingredients on this bottle says a hundred percent organic humic compounds. So, so it is like a compost derived product, probably. I'm I'm on it, man. I'm I'm hitting the contact page as soon as we're off of this call. But um. Listen, man, you just dropped a bunch of great knowledge. Let's make sure we give some love to your uh, to your strains here before we call it a show. Um, upcoming strains, ones you have available, anything you want to talk about? Yeah. So, well, I guess in, did we want to uh, kind of brief over uh, people who want to home breed and maybe a, a setup for that, or why don't we tease home breeding for the next one? Yeah, and then we will uh, we'll just talk about your strains. Make sure that we send people to the right places, and then wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Um, yeah. I mean, in a nutshell, I mean, I have a, a drop coming in, uh, in three weeks, you know, so the biggest thing for me, and, uh, again, I think I've explained this uh, the last time we talked, but you know, when you're, when you do have seeds, the whole goal, if you want them to be actual viable seeds and ready for the community and, you know, my germination rates are extremely high. I, I'm, I've never had anybody say that they didn't germinate or pop open. Um, but you want this, the flower to get so dry that it turns into powder. And at that point, the, the bark on the seed itself is actually dry and it's actually screaming for moisture, which is why when it actually finally gets wet, you know, they tend to do really well. But um, so, yeah, in two or three weeks, it should be dried out and I'll be able, you know, uh, my packaging, my new packaging I'm working on will be ready for Wednesday. And uh, so once that packaging is done, I have, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'd say, yeah, two or three weeks, I should have a brand new drop uh, if anybody's looking. But again, if anybody's looking for you know, a really good Af- Afghani line that it's on there and the trade pop charts. Those are both really uh, extremely indica dominant, very cherry flavor, like cherry on the inhale and the exhale. Trichome, really good yields. Both those plants are on that on the website. I would I would look at those. Uh, the brown sugar cake and the Boston cream donut are, are wedding cake, uh, basically progenies. But both those are really good yielding, really, really uh, stinky trichome production. I, I would highly suggest those mm. two. And I think as of right now, I've, I don't really have much more on there other than those. It seems like you do focus a lot on, uh, if we can, just just talk about kind of your, I don't know, palate. You do seem to focus a lot on sweeter stuff, right? And gassier stuff, it seems like. I don't see a ton of, you know, GMOs or skunks or funks. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, well, again, my biggest thing for, and what protects my 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 business is strong girls. So I don't really care what flavor it is, as long as they can perform, you know. Because at the end of the day, that's what the community can't have. Wow, girls that are that are seeding their plants and they have seeds. It just it just screws them, you know. So that's that's my biggest concern for one. Which it, now commenting on that, that that leaves me with little 
people to go through. It's like, well, Kyle, who do you trust to go through to find teeth like that? I don't really, not many people, you know, where I'm going to spend $200 or a hundred dollars a pack. And then, you know, and then basically a bunch of them herm or like, you know, you get one good one that doesn't herm and it's fire. Well, I can't breed with that. <laughs> so like, it's awesome to have, but like, you know, I'm not a commercial facility just growing out flour. I'm the seed guy. I'm the one that's giving the seeds out. So that doesn't do much for me. These these three hundred dollar fire packs that are like eight half herms, you know, like it doesn't do anything. <laughs> well, then let's. Uh, well, first of all, all the listeners, peabreeding dot com. That's where you can go to get seeds. But who do you kind of trust or look up to or whatever in the industry who are breeding? Yeah, so I was thinking about that before you called. It's like you know, what could I tell you? Uh, so what I could tell other people is find people that have something to lose. Mm. That's the best answer I could give you. So I would say. You know, I would just leave it at that, you know, let people do, uh, I don't want to bring people and then have it be my name on it, but it just basically find people and, and which is hard. Cause it's like, well, Kyle, what about the little people? Right. And cause I was at some one point basically didn't, a nobody, but I would think if you're looking for breeding stock to start with, find someone that has a reputation and go that route first, mm. a good reputation though, because if some of these, and that's the hard part, well, which one's that? Cause you know, there's a bunch of these guys that have, you know, over a hundred thousand followers that are still selling herms, you know, like, again, some of them don't herm in their fire, but like, it's still, for, but for breeding stock, you know, you just gotta, I don't know, I guess to name a couple mean gene, you know, he's a, he's very reliable. Nice. I would say, uh, shout out to 2020 me. Mendocino. Nice. Yeah. Shout out to 2020 Mendocino. Uh, Adam's a good guy. I'll give him that. And obviously me. <laughs> <laughs> Peabreeding.com. Of course. Yeah, if you yeah, go there first. <laughs> no, I I do know what you mean about about the reputation, for sure. Yeah, because anybody who's doing it really big, they they can't afford to just do a quick cross and then release it because their their name's gonna they're they're gonna plummet, right. you know. And then you you know, I mean, you've heard you've heard it around who's who's got herms and you know it's fire, but it's there's herms in there, you know. It's I have heard that, and to be honest, I've also heard mixed reviews, which makes things more confusing. Someone will stand by a breeder, someone won't, and it's like it is quite overwhelming. But I think you're right. When you look to the OGs, I think you'll have a better. Yeah, just look for look for the company that doesn't have that. That I mean, but then again, how do you find out? You know, because no one's just. I don't know. That's a tough one. But those, uh, you know, Humboldt Sea Company, they, you know, they seem to be doing okay. Basically, those are. If I had to trust anybody, it would be probably those three: Humboldt, Adam, or 2020, and Mean Gene. Those, those are like my. Well, my direct source is probably Mean Gene, and maybe 2020 Mendocino. Nice. Those, those would be. Those are my two. That root beer. Like you know, I love that root. I love root beer, like as a drink. So yeah. I would love to get me and Gene on the show. I know that's probably a tough get. Him and Skunk Tech did a uh, collaboration on a root beer GMO. And I have uh, a root beer, I'm sorry, a root beer by GMO back crossed by another root beer. <laughs> nice. So I have that as a, and they actually, I have a clone only from him that I, I that's actually pregnant with a bunch of, uh, of John Green Bodie's Kush. So those will be on the website, but those will be like extremely limited because I don't think I got much pollen on there. Oh, that's sweet. I would love to try that. Yeah. I tried to uh, bribe Mean Gene with some coffee and I, I, I use that purity coffee to, to lure him to the show. But uh, I think the yeah. DMs fell off or something. So I'll reach back out to him. But um, I was going to say, oh yeah, to be clear, you are talking about, you know, starting a breeding stock, as you were saying. I think you made a good point, which is a lot of people who are growing for flour, a lot of home growers who are listening to this episode, there's a lot less, there's a lot more leeway. There's a lot less pressure when it comes to that sort of thing. And honestly, just different goals when it comes to just getting the medicine that they want, right? And, and right. just just the way they like it. So it's interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a, yeah, it's strictly for, for breeding stock. You know, you need to find like, you know, there's not many people that are, are taking the time to find strong girls, you know, at all. It's not it's not a thing. But at the end of the day, you know, we'll see who wins, you know, or who, who lasts, you know, <laughs> especially once especially once the, the market gets federally legal. You know, it's the only people that stay true and, you know, are, are just like putting out good, good products for the people is, is going to win, you know, so. I do think it's ballsy to say that you're going for basically the opposite of what everyone else is going for right now with the fire flavors and the tricone coverage and all of that, we've kind of lost, I think that you could make the argument that a lot of breeders have kind of lost sight of, like you said, uh, vigor, hardiness, ease of growth. And you're still going to find some that, that check the boxes you're looking for, but select yeah. for those things and you'll get a different, you'll get a different gene pool. Yeah. I mean, basically the only thing I don't get is some of the mainstream crap, but whatever, right. you know, like uh, it is what it is, you know, where's but your it, runts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. All the it. cookie. Well, you didn't even want to get me on the whole cookie thing, man. Uh, I don't know, I feel like, uh, <laughs> on the next 
predicate of breeding okay. episode, or the next Kyle Breeder episode, we'll dive deep sure. into cookies. Oh boy! Oh boy! Yeah, the the, the, the leader of the industry. <laughs> awesome, man! Well, thank you for joining us again. Uh, predicate of breeding on Instagram, pbreeding.com. Anything else? Uh, that those are the those are the places to find you, right? Yeah, predicated breeding, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, pbreeding.com. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate it, Jordan. And whenever you want to have me on, man, just let me know. Love it, man. We'll have you back. Uh, we'll have you back shortly. Maybe on Growcast TV next time for the members. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I've been. Uh That'd be really cool, actually. Nice. Done. Done and done. Yeah, that's a really fun live stream we do there, listeners. Check it out at patreon.com slash growcast. You know you want to. I think there's a free one up at growcastpodcast.com forward slash GCTV. Anyways, folks, that's all for today. This is Jordan River and Kyle Breeder signing off saying be safe out there and grow smarter. Take care. That's all for today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this awesome episode. I know you did. Before we wrap it up, AC Infinity, our one-stop shop partners for just about everything you need for growing. Tents, now lights, the best fans. I don't use any other fans. Scissors, ratchets, so much more. Use code GROWCAST15 for 15% off. That's a whopping 15% off. And make sure to use that GROWCAST code. And like I said, send us a screenshot of that code and be entered to win free seeds. Woo! AC Infinity, as I said, the best fans in the game. Everybody's copying their style. And now they're making some badass lights. Their tents are super, super thick. Uh, take a look at what the, the poles are made out of and how thick they are. AC Infinity, they're really becoming your one-stop shop for grow gear, high-quality grow gear at an affordable price. Make it more affordable with code GROWCAST15, 15% off at acinfinity.com. That's acinfinity.com. Thank you all. I appreciate each and every one of you subscribers. Uh, Of course, check out all the member content. We've got a great Growcast TV episode with Kyle. If you enjoyed this one, you can get uh, two hours of more content with him uh, over at patreon.com slash Growcast. That was a great one. All the Growcast TVs are great. We just hit season two. So come and check it out. But yeah, I just appreciate you guys subscribing and downloading and listening. And I appreciate being able to help you in your garden. So please stay tuned. Best of luck in your gardens. Bye-bye, everybody.